click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about the memory mapping of the file system in the management structure of the operating system. How the memory mapping is implemented and how it is implemented while doing the I.O. Consider the sequential file disk access when we are performing this normal standard system calls like read, write and execute operations. Now when we are performing these operations to the file, two things can happen. One is that we are reading the file directly from the disk. Otherwise we can do that we are memory mapping the file into the particular virtual memory address space of the process which is accessing the file. The second one we are concerned about today's discussion. Now when we are memory mapping the file into this process's virtual memory address space, that means the desired file section is moved to the address space of the virtual memory from the disk of the actual main memory. Now this mapping becomes extremely necessary to reduce the system speed and to reduce the memory access time. So now when we can reduce this system speed and access time, we can generally map this file into a block system structure. Now this block system structure can perform the ordinary system calls just like they were being performed in the normal disk access. Now the actual mapping is implemented while mapping to the actual physical page in the disk and all of the copies contained in the process's virtual address space. The system calls like read, write and execute as we have mentioned are performed normally on this file sections as we have moved it to the virtual memory space. Now this mapping is done as we have told that the physical address space is now moved to this virtual address one so the address translation becomes necessary and it should be done very carefully so avoiding any type of interrupt that can occur by this operating system. Initially, the file access is performed by the pure demand paging of that file. That is, the page is only brought into this virtual address space when it is actually needed to be required to execute that particular process. Now, as we know that pure demand paging cause extremely high page faults that is occurred between this access of memory. Now, after the page fault has occurred and all the pages are now brought into this memory address space of the virtual one, then we can access these file sections as normal performance of this read, write and execute system calls. Now when we can actually manipulate this call not by referring to the operating system or kernel memory, then it is becoming extremely reliable and smooth for this virtual memory space to control the memory space of that particular computer system. Now we will see a diagram that how this mapping process is actually mapped to the physical address space of that particular block. Here you can see that two processes have A and B, their virtual memory spaces, where the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, these process pages are the own copies of process A and here it is mentioning in the other location process B's virtual memory address space. Now this both address space are mapping to this actual physical pages which is numbered and indexed in the another index. So now every page physical which is indexed from this page table now are pointing to the actual references of this physical pages. 
Now, when the process A is referencing to say for page 1, then it is making an pointer to this page 1 as well as process 1 of this process B, then making a reference to this page 1. Now, both are referencing to the actual physical page, whereas the own copy they are residing with is another one. Now, in this type of case, where the functionality providing copy on right can accessible. What is that? That is, that actual page is shared between the processes and whenever they want to modify the particular page, then they are having the own copies of that particular processes. Now, in this way, copy on write functionality can be a part of this memory mapped files. Now, when this performance of mapping is done, it is not actually implemented by writing to the disk. Now, it is not actually implemented to the writing to the disk. Whenever this memory mapped is modified, it is then performed only in the virtual memory address space, not in the disk, where periodically operating system checks that the disk has been modified or not. So both are not done simultaneously. This becomes an advantage that after all the file parts or sections that has been modified by the processes are at last then driven to the disk to be modified themselves. Now this gives the data consistency to be properly maintained by this ACID property. Now whenever we are satisfying this type of property, we can say that like Solaris and Windows, they perform the memory mapped file system calls other than the system ordinary file system calls through the I operation like read, write and execute. Now if the file is not mentioned, say with the mmap system call, then also Solaris treats the all files as in memory map files. Now, whenever the file is read, it is considered to be read directly from the disk. Whenever the file is executed on the write operation, then it is considered to be copied on the virtual address space of that process and that address space then will modify the particular section of the file. And the virtual address space of that particular kernel memory area is then being modified. Now, in this way, memory map file becomes extremely necessary for handling the copy on write and handling the reduced data that is needed to perform only in this kernel memory portion. Now, as we know that the processes can communicate by the shared memory sections, as we have already described in the previous videos, that can be done using this mutual exclusion property. Say some processes want to share a memory within a shared object. Now that memory can also be implemented within this memory mapped files, that is all the memory that is being shared are may copied to the virtual address space of the particular processes. Now only that part which is to be shared between these processes are put into the shared object area of that particular memory section. So that now the process can access them both read and write. If it is an read access, then both the process can simultaneously read the data if it is a write access, then only one process can write the data. Another has to wait after the process A will finish its write on this particular section of data. Now we will see that how to do that. Process A has some shared memory on the shared object. Here the memory mapped files is also having a shared memory which is shared between this process A and process B. So in this way the virtual address space of this memory mapped files is used for the sharing of communication between these processes. So in this way POSIX, pthread, libraries, windows, solaris all can do the memory map file operations very smoothly. Now we will move to the second part of our discussion that is a memory mapped I.O. Like we have already told that I.O. is considered like a normal file when we are considered this as devices in this operating system. Now the files can be read, write and executed as a normal file I.O. operation. 
So this IO need to be memory mapped also, so can it will be transferred and shared between the processes. So after the IO is being placed in the memory mapped section of the processes, then it can be transferred and put into the device queue for the processes to get execute or to get execute on it. Now whenever this process is executing on that particular IO device, it is then acquiring a special type of lock that is known as a port lock, particularly on that IO device. After the IO device has been performed and then made available to another process to execute on it, then it is getting it by releasing the lock. So this port IO lock and port IO unlock functions are used to get locked and unlock this particular IO device to being used by these processes. Now IO is managed by the operating system kernel, not by the user processes. So it will be in the policy decision of this operating system that to which process it will first allocate the IO to actually arrange the processes so that the CPU utilization and throughput be the maximum and respond time and waiting time be the minimum. Now this memory mapped IO is also convenient for some system structure which are using port in the modem and printer devices to get connected to the actual operating system. Now whenever this type of things happen, then we are sending the long stream of bytes to the modem or the printer. Say suppose we are printing a page or text word file. So we are giving the printer the information in terms of a long sequence of bytes along with a control bit. Now this control bit will declare that which of the process or the sequence of byte will move first and after that which will move second. So whenever the printer will get the first sequence of bytes, then the control bit is cleared. After the control bit is cleared, then again it is set for the second sequence of byte. So in this way, the control bit are generally accessible by the sequence of bytes to get the printer or modem job done on the basis of a memory mapped file IO. Now if the CPU is controlling this control bit to pull it looping in a direction that after one byte it will check for the other byte, after that byte it will check for another byte, so it is done and known as a programmed IO, that is CPU is controlling the polling. If CPU is not in control of that particular polling, then it is done by the user processes to which the memory mapped IO is performed on. So this is all for this memory mapped file and IO performance according to the memory management system. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.